with our obsessions of 2021. Here's my GMA colleague, Michael Strahan. In 2021, I was obsessed with anything in pop culture I was obsessed with. I was obsessed with my bed. That is the most honest that I can be. Well, whether you were sleeping on it or you consumed it all, we're here to remind you of all the incredible moments that pop culture had to offer this year. Let's go. Starting with the return of movies to the theater after more than a year. Marvel fans all over the world were waiting for this one. Making Spider-Man No Way Home the most successful film to premiere since the pandemic hit and putting it among the biggest opening weekends ever. I think so much of what we all miss was the communal fan experience of Ooey and I. The smell of popcorn, the booming speakers. We were back and enjoying hits like Cruella. I'm Cruella. In the Heights and Last Night in Soho. I know what you did. But perhaps the most anticipated film of 2021 was the 25th Bond film, No Time to Die, which brought an end to Daniel Craig's run as 007. It's been 15 years, five films, <clears throat> tuxedos, martinis, cars, <laughs> all these different things. I think it will take me 15 years to unpick all of this. Powerhouse UCLA gymnast Nia Dennis and Marzetta Frazier made us all proud citizens of Rhythm Nation with their floor routines that celebrated black excellence. The countless amounts of people just cheering us on from all around the globe and really just accepting us for who we truly are is very special to me. For the Korean boy band that keeps on giving, 2021 was Smooth like butter, like criminal undercover Taking the world by storm You have the BTS mail and McDonald's When BTS collaborated with McDonald's to launch their latest smash hit Not to be outdone All I want for Christmas is all of you to try the Mariah Men at McDonald's She's like I see your meal, but I'm going to one-up you in Mariah fashion and make an entire menu. The McFlurry machine might always be broken, but now we'll have a champagne fountain in honor of Mariah Carey. Delayed by the pandemic, the 2020 Summer Olympics showdown in Tokyo went full speed ahead, just with a few thousand less spectators. It was so quiet. Um, you know, compared to every other Olympics that I've been to in the past, it was just strange. It felt, it felt odd, spooky. Russell is going to win gold. It's Sunni Lee. Who's going to win the Olympic all-around gold medal? I was very much excited to watch that surfing event it being included for the first time. Carissa Moore from the U.S. bringing home gold. Carissa Moore, your first female gold medalist for the United States of America. So it's important to give these women an opportunity and a chance. It's life-changing stuff. From sports icons to an iconic comeback. Hold on, let me fix my curtain bangs while you ask me about Y2K fashion coming back. The chunky shoes, velour track suits, and even bucket hats got a second life in 2021. The low-rise jeans, however, are the worst possible fashion idea to come back. Move over, Y2K. They're the new acronym in town, NFT. I know that NFTs stands for non-fungible token. Further than that, I know nothing. They are basically as arbitrary as diamonds. Diamonds have no intrinsic value, really. Neither do NFTs. Diamonds have value because we say they have value. You know how people just like need to own a Picasso? Like they need to own the one that Picasso touched, even though it's just paint and canvas? An NFT is a way for them to do the same thing but with like a picture of a squirrel on the internet. And sure, while you can monetize memes like Nian Cat, which sold for almost $600,000, NFTs have become a way for digital artists like Beeple to sell their work. With the help of Christie's art auction house, he sold his NFT titled Every Days, The First 5,000 Days This Year for a staggering $69 million. $69 million. I think it probably means digital art is here to stay. I don't get it. I'm not going to get it. And can someone just let me know when it's time and I have to get it? But one thing we do know, if you were looking for a good TV show to watch, We've got HBO Go, Disney Plus, Hulu, Pop TV, Netflix. There's Amazon, not to be confused with where you shop. <laughs> Apple, Apple TV, 
Child. I do watch Ted Lasso, though. And the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series goes to Ted Lasso. Oh my God, how lucky am I? You know, it's really, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Life-changing for all of us, really. Drink to me! The reason why Ted Lasso has been, I think, so universally accepted is we've all needed a little bit of goodness. Be curious, not judgmental. I like that. Every single episode, you walk away feeling like, you know what, maybe the world isn't such a dismal, dark place. Oh, hey, 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 one last thing. Speaking of dark and dismal, Squid Games is the weirdest, darkest show of the year, but is also intoxicating. It was like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory meets Saw, meets like a Lord of the Flies type. The Netflix show that rattled the entire planet pulled in over 1.6 billion hours of viewing in its first month alone. From the hottest show on TV to the woman who's been painting the music industry red, Taylor Swift began re-recording and releasing Taylor's versions of her albums, going on late night to share the news. Going back and, and reliving these things with the fans, and this time around, I get to really, I get to do things that I know they wish I would have done the first time. Delivering on her promise, Taylor released the never before heard 10 minute version of her beloved song, All Too Well. In my head, I was there, I remember it all too well. Complete with the short film. I feel like I haven't slept at all this year because I've been looking at these Easter eggs and talking about these Easter eggs. The internet is like, all right, guys, who's got what? I'll take the first 10 frames, you get the next. And you couldn't scroll through TikTok without seeing someone bell out in the shower, the car, or even the bar. Hey, you me up again just to break me like a promise. 10 minutes of All Too Well, just give me a corner to go cry in, and I'll be back in, you know, like after the 10th time I listen to it. But give her the scarf back. Give her the scarf back. I just want someone to give her back her scarf. That's all. <laughs> but the 2021 moment will be holding on for years to come. You hear the piano at the beginning and it's just like, okay, here it comes, here the tears come. Go easy, help me, baby. I have cried in my car to Adele more times than I would like to admit on this program. Soulful, heartfelt, raw, and real, Adele checked all the boxes when she released her highly anticipated album, 30, celebrating with her concert and audience with Adele. Oh my God, hearing her voice from like three rows back. It's like the most magnificent train smacking you between the eyeballs. And no one sings their face off like you, my friend. Oh, oh no one. When she did her concert, on CBS, every star in Hollywood was fighting to be there. I often marvel that we're, we're still, we're living in a world where we have Adele. Like we're living in a world where there's an Adele. It's kind of a miracle. She's kind of a miracle. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.